biker buddies transforming ordinary helmets into souped-up devices. Safety is, of course, our top priority. An anime lover, 3D printing bespoke pills. A taekwondo black belt, breaking new ground with healthier calves. An aerial silk dancer. I love it. I can fly. Turning waste into magic fiber. Also, a Star Wars fan, revolutionizing electronic skin. And a young man with a drone that's playing the part of a bee. These are Singapore's Wizards of Tech. In this episode, Tech Wizardry for the Home. Window gadgets that cancel noise. Super-powered plants for purer air. And a shape-shifting robot that cleans. This wizard of tech is a robotics professor. It's going the wrong way. And a video game addict. Be it chilling at home or doing chores, Mohan Ilara needs his Tetris fix. My father's favourite video game is Tetris. He plays it very often. <laughs> he normally plays it on his bed. And then... Also plays it when it's cooking. My father loves Tetris so much that he's even making a robot like Tetris, which is Hedge Tetro. It can change shape just like the Tetris game. Give me an I. Give me an L. Give me a Z. Mohan's Tetris-inspired robot is a cleaning robot developed to reach every nook and cranny. Yes, so there has been a steep increase in the number of residential cleaning robots. There are over 1,000 companies that are making such uh, floor cleaning robots. However, these robots uh, present a number of challenges. Because of the fixed morphology of these robots, it is hard to access tight furniture, constrained spaces, and they often clean about 70% of a typical home, and the remaining 30% is left for inhabitants of the home to clean. We have been constantly looking to improve maintenance robots that are in the market. With our robots, with their ability to shape shift using Tetris principles, and assuming one of seven forms, they achieve area coverage performance over 95%. Like dancers, the four modules making up the H Tetro must achieve perfect harmony. But synchronizing the modules to attach and detach at the right time needs a fair bit of tech magic. Our robots communicate between the four hinged modules. The brain is shared in all four units, and all four units have the sensors to sense. So basically, they have a distributed brain to make a decision. That distributed brain is powered by artificial intelligence. Faced with a room to clean, the H Tetro does a scan and creates a parameter map for quick action. For any cleaning robot, it has to plan its path it can be a case where the robot is maximizing cleaning. In some other situations, we want robots that can do cleaning in the fastest time. For such situations, AI strategies look at the places that are unclean, detect these unclean areas, go and attack these places. So one example is uh, having colored papers thrown on a floor. Our robot uses the AI to detect exactly these colored papers approach them uh, and clean them. The, the robot effectively finishes the cleaning task in the fastest time and also saves energy. 
Besides the ability to plan and strategize, the robot also has smooth moves. We have been trying out different type of mobility mechanisms. With previous wheels, the platforms work more like the cars that we see today, and the platforms cannot move sideways. We look at consumer products, only wheels are often used in some of the suitcases. These are holonomic, meaning they allow for mobility in any direction. And these principles are transferred to apply them in robotic platforms to improve the mobility in these robots. To build his perfect cleaning robot, Mohan has spent many hours and dollars studying the competition. Typically, I spend a thousand to thousand five hundred dollars a year, depending on how exciting these robots are. Luckily for him, Mrs. Mohan doesn't mind. Uh, I feel quite happy to observe this one new function for the recent robots. Is they have a more pin function. You can really see the difference. It's a uh, floor after do the cleaning is quite shiny. <laughs> Salt and curry powder on the floor. So let's see how the robot will clean it up. So with my boys, they always tend to apply the principles they learn from their science experiments at school. They have a list of nine or ten variables um, to evaluate them, starting with the amount of space that these robots cover and uh, the sound that they produce. Uh, they look at uh, variables like the ability of the robot to operate for uh, very long hours and uh, to be charged in a very short time and compute the points mm, this is straight, this is wrong. to arrive at uh, a winner. Whoop. Yes, so recently they graded uh, my robot. So with uh, the earlier version of Hashtetro, we had uh, infrared sensors and uh, LIDARs, which are primarily light-based sensors, which are sufficient enough to detect uh, most of the obstacles in a given space. But when it comes to um, transparent objects like uh, glass, it becomes difficult as the light is allowed to pass through and the robots collide with these obstacles. Since then, Mohan has been making improvements. We have added ultrasonic sensors to our Hashtetro robot to detect specifically a glass door and glass facades. And today, it's time to bring out the scorecards again. But first, a quick lesson. Guys, do you know how ultrasound works? Whales use ultrasound. They use it to detect how far or near sea creatures or other shapes are. Wow. Good job. Thank you. The Mohan household is ready. A glass avoidance course has been laid out. The judges are ready. And the robot gets to work. I gave Hedge Tetro 2 10 out of 10 because it managed to detect the glass and avoid it. I think the sensors are very good because it uses ultrasound like the bat. And it's very awesome. But Mohan won't be resting on his laurels. Improvements in Hashtetro is a constant process. I believe Hashtetro, you can see it, see it in the market in a period of about one and a half to two years time frame. Now, with the COVID situation, we have been impacted in terms of hardware developments and the deployment uh, trials as well. But while the pandemic has brought delays, it has also opened up opportunities. Mohan has been working on a self-cleaning robot for lift panels and escalator railings. His formidable judges won't be scoring those just yet though, because Daddy is busy with Tetris. Coming up, a 
A talent for sound that's cancelling noise pollution. Gan Wun Singh is a man with a mission. He is here to get rid of noise. For nearly 30 years, he's had a passion for sound and his ears are finely tuned to urban noise. Traffic noise, scooters in the background, maybe a tutu, India or Thailand. Trucks drilling sound. Construction sites. Oh, releasing some gas pressure. Is it from the tire? Today, he is here to tackle this housing estate. His team has installed a recording device which will collect the sounds over the next few days. Gan himself has another mission. I'm also here trying to examine a disturbance that has been heard late in the evening. Yes, sometimes Gan plays sound detective, but that's certainly not his full-time job. Hi, welcome to the Sound Labs. Over here, we conduct experiment of these anti-noise devices to reduce the urban noise in the home. The simplest way to block the noise is by closing the window. But at the same time, you are also uh, preventing natural ventilation. Our solution allows the residents to have open ventilation without closing the windows. And in the process, it will save the energies without turning on the aircon. Welcome to my one-room apartment. Because of this shoot, I quickly put together some of the paintings and fake flowers to make it look like a room. Over here, you will see that there is the, this opening which is fitted with uh, 24 channels of active noise control device. Out there, I have two assistants helping me to play back the different types of noise. Let's start with some traffic noise. You will see that the sound level is around 63 decibel without the active noise control device turned on. Let's see what happens when the active noise control is turned on. Basically a reduction of 10 decibel. It reduced down to 53 decibel. Decibel is the unit used to measure the intensity of a sound. So now, let's try it with a train. There's a 65 decibel of sound pressure level. Turn on the device and magically... The noise level dropped by around 9 to 10 decibel. Noise pollution has been troubling many Asian cities, especially with the current rapid urbanisation. Especially like in tropical countries like Singapore, we need our windows open to allow fresh air to come into our building. Long-term exposure of this noise can lead to hypertension, heart disease and hearing loss. A scientific report has mentioned that a 10 decibel reduction of noise can lead to a significant reduction in heart disease and hypertension. Gan's device works just like a noise-cancelling headset, which have small microphones on the outside, which are constantly picking up ambient sound. Here's how it works. When the microphones detect a sound, in this case, opera, a similar but inverted sound is created. Together, they cancel each other out. 
The anti-noise device basically uses the same technology as the noise cancelling headsets. But we are dealing with a much larger space. So it has a microphone that listens to the environment and generate the anti-noise. And we need to position the speakers in the right manner. And at the same time, we need to emit the anti-noise at the right timing for a significant noise reduction to happen. Gan's next task is to take the device to the next level, with major changes already in the works. The current versions of the 24 device block the view and it may be restricted to windows with grills. So now we are working towards a new prototypes that is placed over at the frame of the windows. In the new prototypes, we also incorporate some artificial intelligence. We do not want to cancel certain sound, for example, alarm or some sound of nature. For example, bird sound, wind sound, which are very pleasant to the residents. As for that noisy disturbance that Gan was investigating? Let's listen to what is this sound sources. Not exactly a big mystery, but useful to Gan all the same. The average sound pressure level of this housing estate has been within the permissible noise limits. So, but except at this point, in the late evening at 8 p.m., you notice that the sound pressure is around a 61 decibel. You can hear. It's at night where children are coming out to play and there are several shoutings and human voice activities around that time. So these are some of the results that we can, we can obtain from our sensor box that helps us to understand the, the, the environment in our residential areas. All these data that we collected can also be used for anti-noise window experimentation. And in case we get the wrong idea... I'm not here to deal with all the noise maker. If you have any noise complaint, please go to the relevant authority. Still to come, a plant lover with super-powered indoor plants. Much of his life, this has been Srinivasan Ramachandran's morning ritual. The day must start with his plans. Years and years I've done this every day without fail. We Hindus, we do a ritual. A tulsi, which is holy basil, we pluck a leaf for the prayers. I have a connection, I feel, you know. When I pluck the tulsi leaf, I generally say I'm sorry to the plant. You know, when I'm stressed, I go to my plant and then just sit there and my stress is gone within like 15, 20 minutes. My daughter says I have too many plants and then I spend too much time with the plants. <laughs> his love for plants extends beyond his home. For nearly 40 years, Sri's been studying plant molecular biology. More recently, he's figured out how a single houseplant can help with a menacing problem. June 21st, 2013, the haze was the worst in Singapore's history. The haze reached hazardous levels. It was 401, the PSI reading. We consider it as hazardous to human health. You know, I suffered a lot for breathing. Um, so I was gasping, I was feeling very uncomfortable. So being a plant scientist, I should do something about it. I can make a solution using plants. The solution? To have a forest, indoors. And no, not the virtual kind we see these days, but bringing indoors the negative air ions found in the great outdoors. Thunderstorms and lightning, and also waterfalls, ocean shores, forests, all release negative air ions. 
When you walk in the forest, 500,000 or half a million negative air ions per cubic centimeter is released. And more than anything, negative air ions can combat the PM2.5, which is the particulate matter 2.5. And this PM2.5 is the pollutant in haze conditions. Plants do release negative air ions, but the negative air ion concentration may not be very high. By placing one plant in the room may not be enough to have the health benefits. But the system what we developed, you can do that. You can do that. That system is a plant ionizer. Using short electrical pulses generated by a probe, the device gives the plant a power boost, enhancing its ability to generate negative air ions by up to a million times. We will burn this mosquito coil inside and create PM2.5 environment, which is hazardous. We will show you how fast it can reduce to healthy levels, less than 55. First, a reading, with Sri's plant ionizer off. Without the device turning on, even after five minutes, 10 minutes, up to four hours even if you leave, it doesn't go down. And now, turned on. When you switch on the device, within five minutes, it comes to normal, which is one unit of PM particles. This plant produces normally only 100 to 200 negative air ions per cubic centimeter. But when we tweak with our instrument, it is more than 120 million negative air ions. The amount of negative air ions which is released by the plants can be equivalent to several forests. But how does the PM2.5 vanishing act happen? Nothing like a party balloon to get the idea across. If you assume this is 2.5, what could be possibly happening is that this is the negative air ion. The PM2.5 is floating in the air freely and then the negative air ions attach themselves to the PM2.5 and then brings down. They'd fall on ground or stick to the surfaces like walls and other places. They'll be like a dust. And this dust can be wiped out. For Sri, his many years of research have paid off. Sri, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The plant ionizer is no longer a prototype. It's now available on the market. And this is the first time Sri's seeing it. I was amazed after coming here to see how the transformation has happened. All the way from what we started as a box. It's a big box and a probe, that's it. It has progressed stage by stage in improving every aspect. And finally, now this is what it is. Even the PM reading can do within this part. They have really taken this to the next level. It is like your child growing into an adult. Not, not adult yet, but still, a child growing. You know. I'm impressed. Dr. Sri, a little gift from us to you. Thank you very much. Only one? Uh, I oh, expected yeah. five. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can get the big one if you can carry it home with you. Oh, no, next time. Next time. Absolutely, I yes. absolutely. <laughs> episode of Wizards of Tech, cutting-edge solutions for the world at large, a life-saving helmet attachment, recycled waste to soak up oil spills, and a drone that does the work of bees.